All right, so welcome into the live show today. Today is a special one because it is our 300,000th subscriber, and we're going to dive into something. This should be the 300,000th subscriber video because the biggest, baddest company, I think, out there that could make a play for the metaverse is who we're going to be talking about today, and that is Microsoft. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Tech Path. Of course, you guys know we've hit the 300K mark, a big deal for us. And also a big deal for you because guess what? That means we're going to be giving away some digital assets back to our audience today in the Diamond Circle. If you've not been part of this, let me give you a trick right now. Go over to the Diamond Circle, subscribe or just join. You're going to get into a list. And essentially what that does, is it gives you a couple of emails a week where we drop a lot of assets. We're going to have a new power index that you'll be able to see ongoing. Uh, that's available over on the Diamond Circle. And guess what? You'll also go in the list today because we're going to be giving away $1,000 in Cardano, and we're going to do it in $250 Cardano slots for you guys. So if you're an ADA lover or maybe you're just thinking about getting into ADA, this is going to be your way to do it. And of course, uh, we'll hit up on the poll really early here because I want to talk about that first. We did a poll in the pre-show here as we were waiting for uh, people to kind of join in for the live stream just to kind of see what the potential is for the metaverse. Who could be the players here? And as you can kind of see, which metaverse would dominate? I know this is more on the game consoles themselves. Microsoft Xbox clearly wins out at 57%, but Sony's right there at 35, and then Nintendo a little bit lower on 8%. And I think what we'll see is kind of a hybrid and a mix of both the metaverse projects that we already see out there in the crypto communities today, a combination of maybe tech companies, someone like a Facebook or a Meta, and then the gaming and also tech companies, meaning Microsoft. Microsoft, I feel like, has a pretty big upper hand here as they've made their announcement in terms of their acquisition of Blizzard Media. So let's go to a quick rundown here on a couple of stories. I want to jump to the seven best metaverse stocks for 2022 and uh, get into that one. Uh, but before we get started, uh, I want to thank our sponsor. And of course, that is Over today. If you guys have not had a chance to see or look at Over, it is a metaverse play. It's one of the retail origins, I think, that are going to be involved in the metaverse. And whether you're looking at what's happening with Microsoft or you see things that are going around in other metaverse plays, Over is one of those tool sets that essentially is going to become one of those all-in-one um, concepts for building inside the metaverse. Now, they had some new things that happened over this uh, month, January, their development timeline. One of the biggest thing is their new map to earn alpha. This is only not only about AR because they're using AR. Let me kind of zoom in on that for you guys. Uh, they're, they're using an AR precision that's creating kind of a, a physical and digital world. So it's creating kind of this whole approach toward new economies. So this is actually where you're going to learn earn money to go out and map real world application. Think of it Pokemon Go, but for the metaverse. And then also the Polygon uh, migration for Marketplace, which is a big move. I think that's going to be uh, a huge opportunity for both Over and the, the ability to be able to buy this on Ethereum, BSC, Polygon, uh, and Over tokens. So lots, lots happening within their project. If you've not followed them over on Twitter, they're doing some pretty cool things. This is, again, one of those early uh, projects. We, of course, had been following this one. I put it in my uh, high-risk portfolio and did really well with it and actually uh, was able to kind of slide in and sell this one and then uh, do some, you know, made some money on this one. So, but the point is, is that as we see technology really start to advance in the metaverse, it is projects like Over, I think, that are going to start to separate. All right, let's jump over to the story today, and that is Microsoft and Xbox becoming really the player at the table for the metaverse. Now, the real question here, as we start to see kind of the, the current champions of gaming consoles and also, I think, in general, games, especially with what's ha happened with Blizzard, and we'll kind of show a little bit about what kind of games are involved in this. But the whole aspect is, and we've talked about this on the channel before, is that the potential merger between blockchain play to earn and AAA gaming only needed a handful of things to occur. A couple of things had to happen, and we talked about this when um, 
Facebook, of course, changed their name in Meta back in October. It kind of set the sandstorm in place for what's happening in the metaverse today when, when Facebook Meta actually came out and said, hey, listen, we're going to do something here, there in terms of the metaverse. But I think when you look at a gaming company and an operating system company from PC and also a mobile aspect, uh, Microsoft is really in a good position. Now, the only other company that I think that would have made a play for this would have been Apple. But because of their ecosystem, the PC application, the lack of a gaming console, this is a natural for uh, Microsoft. And of course, if you look at their the top performance stocks um, on Metaverse, you kind of look at, at where they're uh, going here. And a couple of them we've talked about before, uh, Roblox, which we've looked at here in comparison to Sandbox, kind of what they're doing. Matterport, which is a company that is doing 3D spatial design. I can't. I wonder how far really they are in Metaverse. Uh, and then U Unity Software, obviously we've seen them and, and where they're going. And then, of course, you've got Microsoft now in the game and also Meta in the game as well. So there just seems to be a pile up here of potentially uh, great in real life companies that are starting to invest in the metaverse. And if you are looking at maybe going and investing in companies that are going in this direction without going into play to earn or into true cryptocurrency metaverse plays, there's a lot more opportunities for you to start to move into this space. It's just a matter of time before we still will see play to earn, I think, in AAA gaming. And I think with the adjustment of what's happening here with uh, Microsoft is going to be huge. So. Uh, Microsoft, this is another one, Microsoft uh, hit by defections as tech giants battle for talent as they build the metaverse. This is another problem I think that Microsoft was dealing with in terms of cre keeping talent in the house. And with Facebook, of course, already kind of throwing down the gauntlet and saying, hey, listen, we're going to move quickly. But remember, it's not just Facebook. It's also all of these play to earn companies and projects in the metaverse and in cryptocurrency that are really sucking up what I think are the biggest um, access to STEM uh, students when you look at Asia and also Europe, which is where typically Microsoft, Facebook, and a lot of Silicon Valley usually harvest, bad word, but it's usually where they get all of their great talent. And I think as we see these areas, especially in Europe and especially in Asia, Asia building up a massive demand for play to earn metaverse gaming development and cryptocurrency in general and of course obviously blockchain technology as a whole it's really putting a little bit of pressure i think on the development opportunity here so this was around 100 people on the team developing microsoft's hololens augmented reality headsets have left and and again mostly been going over to the project on facebook that i think was one of the things that helped microsoft kind of push the envelope a little bit here in terms of their acquisition and the acquisition, of course, is a big one. And that is right here, um, Microsoft team announcing when Candy Crush and uh, Call of Duty become your actual job, Xbox, Activision, Blizzard. Uh, this is, I think, a, a match made in heaven. And it's just a matter of time before we start to see Microsoft, either one, starting to either pile in developers into blockchain and play to earn, and or potentially getting involved in other acquisitions or investments. And I think most likely it'll be the latter, at least in the beginning. This year will be a strategy play for Microsoft, providing this gets through the acquisition uh, from a legality, a legality standpoint. But I think 2022 will be a strategy year that Microsoft is going to essentially be queuing up what's going to happen uh, going forward in the metaverse itself. And you can kind of see another tweet here. Welcome Activision Blizzard to the Xbox family. I mean, look at the lineup here of just what's happening within this, uh, this acquisition. The, the potential here is absolutely huge. I mean, the opportunity for Xbox to really kind of move into their next direction. We're going to pull a couple of polls here, I know, in reference to how and whether or not you think, you know, console gaming would be the end-all be-all or if we'll see more mo mobile and PC applications in you know, 2X type environments versus what may uh, be done in AR, VR. I'm kind of curious on your thoughts on that because I think that's going to be a big part of it. One thing also, I uh, want to thank another sponsor of ours and that of course is Token Metrics. Token Metrics is a tool I use every day and it's one of the key things that I like to do around identifying new projects. And probably the easiest way I can show this is when I'm going in and looking at 
a lot of these metaverse plays, I do it through my filter and it's really just simple and easy. I'll go in here, less or equal to, and in this particular case, I'm gonna do 25 million, apply that filter, and boom. That's gonna give me a quick review of the projects that I can start looking at based on the token metric score, their TM grade. And basically, this is just a combination of a little bit of sentiment data and then also a little bit of their research as they apply it to different projects. And then that applies to something we do on the back end, which is our CPI. And it's what makes us unique is our crypto power index. And we use that as a bouncing mechanism to kind of test what's happening over what we find in token metrics. And then if we like it, then we'll go out and execute on it and go buy the token maybe. So lots happening there. And the other thing that is kind of cool about this is this whole quick movement into the metaverse. One of the key things here is Cardano and ADA, of course, scaling plans to move to the Basho phase for 2022. And we talked about this in a recent video here on Cardano's metaverse, and there's a lot of activity within uh, Cardano right now, especially as they start to prepare for scalability. And I think this will be the key with Cardano. Many of the projects, what the point is that we're making here is many of the projects are moving into this space. When you have enough transactions moving into the space and you have heavy hitters like a Cardano, you look at someone like an, an Avalanche, Solana, all these guys that potentially could start to really play into the strategy, meaning partnerships, with someone like a Microsoft that is already looking at a play to earn model and a metaverse play and how they potentially could integrate that over the next few years. This is just a matter of time, I think, before we really see what's gonna happen here. Now, uh, I think when you look at where they're going in general, there's a couple of things you have to kind of compare to, and that is the existing situation with what's happening in the gaming world today. And, and you guys probably already know this, but part of this is the existing gaming world is not super fond of NFTs. And I think the reason is it's been, you know, it's been somewhat free to play to a certain extent. I know that you can uh, pay for different skins and, and tools within a variety of different games, but it's a different model than what you're seeing in the pay to play model, which is really where play to earn is kind of going to. And that I think has caused such a pushback. If you look at this article here, Gaming World Reacts to Microsoft's Shocking Purchase, of Activision Blizzard, this I can I kind of think pushes in again with what is happening in the gaming community itself. Is there's a little bit of pushback? My question is whether or not this pushback is short lived, and I'd like to know that. Maybe you guys can drop it in the comments. We'll, maybe we'll pull a poll up, poll up here as we go. Of uh, do you think pushback will occur in play to earn, or do you think eventually will you know? all gamers just realize, wow, this is really the way to do it. It's really the model that we should be evolving to at some point. So you can kind of see what uh, Phil Spencer said here. As we extend the joy and community of gaming, everyone incredibly excited to become a fantastic team, iconic franchises. I think that's the big part of it. And you know, Phil also, and many executives are already uh, talking about uh, the use of the metaverse and what that might mean. And of course, we're gonna pull up a poll real quick and I think this one is on who is going to be the first book. All right, so there that's interesting. Facebook Meta, 56% of you are saying that they'll be the first one out with it. I think you might be right here just because Facebook has been, if you look at their lineup of acquisitions, go to their Wikipedia, take a look at the companies that they've been acquiring since 2019. A lot of them are play-to-earn gaming companies, metaverse plays, blockchain gaming, a lot of companies through acquisition, aqua hires, so to speak. And I think that's the key here. And again, with you saw on the first story we talked about with Microsoft losing developers to Facebook, it's gonna be a talent game again. And this happens in Silicon Valley quite often. We saw this in the early days of social media where the talent uh, game became a big issue with trying to keep talent and programmers, designers, engineers. It gets a little bit more uh, muddy here though because I think the biggest aspect of that is that uh, blockchain kind of throws a little bit of a wrench in the situation when you have blockchain out there doing things that are considerably different versus what we see in web 2.0. So Microsoft makes a uh, basically a 69 billion dollar gaming and metaverse bet. 
This has really been the big one right here. And here's the thing right here. This acquisition will accelerate the growth in Microsoft's gaming business across PC, mobile, cl console, cloud, and will provide the building blocks for Metaverse. So it is very clear that their direction is fully set upon the Metaverse and what that means, and whether or not this can become what could be the really next evolution of the gaming ecosystem for global gamers worldwide, along with how play to earn and blockchain kind of falls into this. We've talked about this a lot last quarter, end of last year, about where Metaverse could be going and why it's so important to be looking at some of these projects, especially around the area of cryptocurrency and where this might be going uh, and what projects are out there uh, for sure. Make sure and put your questions in the side chat. If you have some metaverse projects that you've been watching or you like play to earn companies and projects, if, if you want, put them in there. We'll take a look at them. I usually get a good feedback on what we're seeing in the side chat, mainly because it gives us an insight as to, one, you guys are great researchers and it usually helps us go out and, and take a look at some of these upstarts. We will be doing a one of our emerging games uh, project tokens and videos probably tomorrow. I'm hoping that we can get that one out tomorrow, but we've got a whole new set of data, a lot of new games coming into the project, uh, analysis that we do on the CPI, and then hopefully that will give you guys at least some ideas on some of the new stuff that might be out there in terms of play to earn for Q1. So lots happening there. I want to jump also over to a couple of charts today just to show you the comparison between Facebook and Microsoft at the time in which they launched Metaverse, if it had any kind of effect on uh, their sentiment overall. Now, stock price, let's don't worry too much about that. But over on the left, you see Microsoft, and they announced this, of course, today, sentiment that was Metaverse-related. We, we shuffled out all other uh, sentiments, so it's not involved in, like, gameplay stuff and stock pricing, all that. Just just keywords, metaverse, and what's happening with their announcement. Sentiment on this was 78.81, which is really a good sentiment score. We we pull these all the time. If you're anywhere near the 80 mark, you're in pretty good, you know, pretty good shape. Now we went back to the date in which um, Facebook announced, which was October 27th last year. And their metaverse-related sentiment was 73.59, so quite a bit lower. Now, there could be some residuals from that because of the gaming relationship and the, the obvious deal between uh, Blizzard and Microsoft and the natural progression of what Microsoft is trying to do here, which is, is essentially, I think, moving into play to earn. And they need the vehicles to be able to get that done, but they need it in these iconic vehicles that can plug directly right into Xbox and Xbox becomes kind of the holy grail. So I think there's a, an interesting play here in the sense that gamers are definitely moving in this direction. I guess the question would be, would gamers go toward Facebook if Facebook were to do something in terms of an acquisition, which I would not put it out of Mark Zuckerberg's idea panel right now of looking at real AAA studios for acquisition for Facebook, because I think eventually that's going to be a play. Now, granted, branding, social, and interactivity tools, e-commerce tools, all those kind of things will be built into Facebook's metaverse, but it is going to be interesting to see how the play-to-earn ecosystem. I think that'll be the big question, because you've got Microsoft over here, which is all about games. Sure, they have operating system. They've got a great uh, PC backbones. Then you've got Facebook over here, which is all about social, and e-commerce. Now, I think the question would be which one ends up winning out? Does the gaming lead the way in play to earn for meta, metaverse or does e-commerce and the idea of social lead the way? Maybe it's a mix of both. I'm kind of curious. Want, love to get your thoughts on that. Microsoft, of course, uh, in comparison to what's happening with projects like Sandbox and others, you know, let's take a quick look at Sandbox. I just want to peek in on their chart right now. So you can kind of see Sandbox has been uh, moving up a little bit. They had this nice little movement back here in, in December, and that had um, sentiment back in here at 81.23, which was really good. They had that nice little run up. And then of course, during the soft part right here, which we've talked about before, Sandbox had a little bit of a correction. And that is right at 38% right there on that correction. 
And I think this is one of those times right now at trading at 440. Could be one of those metaverse plays that could get a little bit of sideways bump because of just some of the things that we're going to start to see, I think, with what Microsoft's whole play is uh, for sure going that direction. I want to get to the giveaways today because we are going to do a lot of that. Before we jump into that, there was one last poll, I think, that was coming through. Yep. Uh, so will gamers warm up to play to earn and NFT gaming? Yes, gaming will explode. I like it. 78%. I think, I think you guys are right. When money gets into the game, it changes people's perspective. Now, granted, there is a certain um, nuance and a certain, um, you know, legacy of where play, you know, AAA gaming has come from. Because if you think about it, you know, my gaming area was era was quite a bit a different, you know, set of games, and it was really the games that kind of set the stage for what we're seeing now in AAA houses. I think now play to earn might be the thing that's going to set the stage for the next generation. And that I think is going to come from Gen Z and even to a certain extent, some of the early millennials that will really start to help uh, move that in. We're going to get to questions today and then we'll do uh, on the final, uh, we'll do our giveaway. And just uh, as a reminder on the diamond circle, you guys should ju uh, jump in on this because it's free to join. Uh, just get in and you'll, you'll be in the wheel uh, where we use a, a quick spinner here to, to randomly select someone that we're going to do a giveaway on. Just remember when we send out a notice to you, because we'll have your email that will be associated with your name, uh, you'll get an email from one of our admin that just is saying, hey, give us your Cardano wallet. We're going to pop that in there. Make sure, in, make sure it is a Cardano wallet because we've had people that sometimes will think they're giving us a, a general wallet or another wallet that's not related to that particular token. So anyway, let's get over here to... Some of the questions, all right, so Nick, Meta will try to buy Vivi. I like that. That's interesting. That's a good play. Because of the IP they already have in their pockets, no need for, okay, all right. So this is an, that's an outlandish statement, but it's one I like. Uh, Metaverse, meaning Facebook, Meta, trying to buy Vivi will be, would be a huge uh, component. And I think, I know some of the, the, looks like the lower thirds aren't flying up there. But this coming from uh, Nick LMAO. Uh, love that name there, Nick. All right, Stephen uh, Brevet. This is coming in from you. Paul, what do you think about uh, Engine Starter for a play on the metaverse? Like it. We've talked about Engine Starter before, and I continue to be a big uh, proponent of anything that is moving into the metaverse and or in use case scenario of any kind of um, launch pad or anything that can help developers really kind of move to that next level. So good one there. Bobby Coons, great to have you back. Man, you do love Zillica. When will Zillica start developing on the two-month roadmap she laid out on your interview? Actually, there was a release on this uh, topic for Zillica, and uh, they actually just did an update, This, I think it was this week. Check their Twitter because uh, she goes into quite a bit of detail that Zillica was doing, and I've been very impressed with what they've done so far. They've been kind of an, a very surprise entry into the metaverse race for sure. So a good one on Zillica. Uh, Major, let's go with you. Activision will acquire big time. Ooh, here we go. Now we're talking. I like it. Major, you're saying Activision will acquire big time by the end of 2023. Mark my words. Put that in the red book right now. That would be a huge acquisition if it, it came to be because... If Activision goes in and does this and you have a play or a full play on where blockchain, true blockchain play to earn, because remember, Big Time does not have a token. So they're using a methodology that a lot of game companies are right now where it's digital assets and they're marketing those digital assets through space NFTs like we talked about before, their VIP passes, their early alpha passes like what you see on Sandbox, all that kind of stuff. So that might be a good play there, Major. I, I like that one. Um, Bobby, yes, I think it is safe to say Sandbox is coming to the Xbox soon. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. Uh, Eric Wood, Microsoft is just asking, what was that one? It's just asking for more antitrust scrutiny. <laughs> okay, so let me give you a little story here, Eric. Um, I used to work for Microsoft, and uh, I was there in that period of time. And the funny thing was, is you're exactly right, is the scrutiny that they will continue to see. And, and listen, Satya Nadella is not a, he, this guy's a smart, smart cat. 
and he understands the steps and the models in which, they'll have to, in which they'll have to make. But I would argue that to a certain extent. Because of the power, remember, when they went through their first antitrust, when we went through that first antitrust, there was really only two players in the um, internet browsers, and that was Netscape and IE. Okay, That was really what that was about. The play was that we could not force uh, PC builders to take IE, Internet Explorer. I don't want to get into all this stuff, but the point is, is that that was a different game than what we're dealing with now because now there's enough play to earn or there's enough consoles out there. Nintendo, you've obviously got a good play there. You've got the Xbox. And I think to a certain extent, you've got enough companies that are starting to develop in this new PC gaming ecosystem. And then you've got games within Apple. All that, I think, kind of helps level the playing field. I think this will be interesting to watch. All right. Uh, do you still th see clunky headsets for VR in the next five years? No, I think it's going to be some sort of really lightweight glass, maybe contacts like you're mentioning right there. Uh, Major coming back in. Uh, no cones will probably be pumped on this news. I agree with you. I don't think this is, I think it's too soft and too early. But the smart people right now are making those subtle plays into the metaverse strategically because this is going to pop when we start to see play to earn moving into AAA. And that is a big one. Real talk, why isn't Apple making moves? This is a very good question. It's one I've been asked multiple times of why is Apple not doing something in blockchain? And I think it's just a matter of time. Remember, Apple has uh, the wallet. They also have integration, I think, still one of the biggest databases of the users in terms of their phone and mobile. If Apple were to make a play, I feel like it would probably have to be something in the mobile space, which could be a very interesting one. Crypto Gen X, uh, Sony needs to find an acquisition in the metaverse space for sure. I think Sony will be on the hunt if they're not already on the hunt. That will be coming uh, for sure. All right, we're going to get over to the giveaways. Man, you guys have been waiting for these giveaways. This, of course, is celebrating our 300,000 subscriber for the channel. It's for thanks, a big thanks to people like you who have subscribed to this show. And that's, you know, it's the number one thing we like to do is give back to our community and you guys you obviously deserve this, but we're gonna do a quick giveaway here. We use this diamond circle wheel and uh, we'll load in the people that have subscribed for the diamond circle itself, and then randomly this wheel will go in and select. Don't, get, don't worry, uh, because when this spins, you'll see how it kind of goes. I'm gonna make sure we have the wheel up. Yeah, there we go. Um, when we spin this, what happens is, is when the names go behind that little silver panel, it repopulates the database, so it's not just that set right there that's going. So let's make our first spin, get going. And our first $250 in Cardano is going to go out to one of our Diamond Circle members. Lots of members in the list this week. That's been for sure. Man, Cardano has been pumping, too. I'm, I'm really impressed with what, uh, what it's been able to do in a short period of time. All right, looks like this one is Alexander Orwin. Congratulations, Alexander. 250 bucks to you. It'll be coming to you in your, uh, in your wallet, man. And again, thanks for the super chats, guys. I appreciate those as you're dropping those in. Let's get in and give some more money away to some more Diamond Circle members. Hopefully, this is going to be a good start for the year for you, and maybe it's getting you a little bit of Cardano that'll make a nice little run because I feel like Cardano's getting ready to do something pretty interesting as it has started to finally uh, shake loose. I still am a little soft on Cardano only because of the development teams that are required to basically build on Haskell, which is a very abstract and different kind of code set than what you see in Rust or Solidity. Peter Cummings, awesome man. You are the next winner of $250 in Cardano. Man, this is going to be cool. Let's go ahead and answer some of the questions. Um, Microsoft Xbox Studios create Disneyland Metaverse Parks. Woo! Sign me up. Any chance <laughs> interviewing someone with Xbox Studios? We've tried and we're hoping to reach out to Xbox Studios and get in on that. Thanks for the super chat, by the way. Uh, Kryptonium. Uh, like that one. I like that strategy, though. One of our crypto pit guys are probably is thinking, oh, yeah, this is going to be like the mix of the perfect game. Could you imagine Metaverse, Disney, Xbox, play to earn, all in one thing, and then in real world, uh, in real world aspects that are Pokemon Go-ish, 
within the parks themselves for rewards and special access, the metaverse will become something we have never seen before, but I think is really going to be fun to watch. All right, we're going to give away some more money. Let's jump back over here and give away some more Cardano. And again, if you guys have joined us late here on the live stream, what we're doing right now is we're giving away digital asset rewards. And the way we do it is it's a random selection that we make for people who are joined in our diamond circle. It costs nothing to join. You guys can just jump in and we just do it as a thank you back to you guys. Looks like it's going to go to Luke. Yep, looks like it's going to go to Luke. Nice job, Luke Week. Um, very cool, very cool. $250 to Luke. So now we've given $750 away in Cardano. So the last one is going to be who? Let's find out and give away some more Cardano. And again, hopefully this is going to pump your Cardano bag a little bit, get you ready for a big first quarter, because I think we are going to start to see some movement in both Bitcoin and also in the altcoins. And if Bitcoin does not, if it does come back down and retest, I feel like this is going to be a very interesting time for some altcoins that are starting to really percolate. All right, looks like we're getting really, really close on this one. This one's a good one. All right, Petro, Santa, Santa Gata. I like that one, Petro. Thank you so much, my man, my lady. It's looking good out there. You guys, of course, have been great in one joining in. It's one of the biggest and most successful, I think, crypto clubs that are out there when it comes to I don't know if, I would not say it's the largest, but it's definitely one of the largest out there in terms of the amount of people that have joined the Diamond Circle. So make sure and just jump in right there. If you guys are over on the podcast right now, the best thing you can do is you can participate in all this. It's really easy. Jump over here to the YouTube channel, find Paul Barron Network, hit subscribe, and then jump into the Diamond Circle. We use that. And of course, if you're not following me on Twitter, I use that and leave that as a pinned comment or pinned post where you can always get to it very easily to join on the Diamond Circle. You can find me on Twitter. It's just at Paul Barron. It's that simple. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.